So we're here at uh, HPP Racing with the uh, 57 to get the uh, engine tuned. So we're going to do a speed density tune with James. He should be here in a minute. And just typical deal, got in a hurry and we forgot to put the engine uh, oil fill cap back on it when I took the engine cover off. So we'll have to find one of those. So uh, we'll get the car, they're going to get the car all strapped down and then we'll see where we are from there. Keep going? No, it's cool in here. Because right now the speedo on this is way off. Now, it's very unlikely that this, that, that shit trans control uses this speedo, but I'm going to make this speedo right just to be sure. Uh, just pull it in the way that's possible. There you go. That's okay, it's not even working on the car. <laughs> like right now it says we're going 48. It was saying we were going over 100, so it made, it made a big, big stride in the right direction. on a roadster shop chassis so now that we've got it drivable we'll put some miles on it let it settle and then i'll re readjust the coal overs and the valving to any car that i get like i start falling asleep while i'm in i'm gonna feel like this good <laughs> i tell you what my, sta my station wagon drives so good i got over 20 miles a gallon on the power tour it's good too right here it's crazy 
There's a new car that don't even get to had a couple of small little issues on the trip. But what was it? Electrical? Yeah. Uh, I don't know which went first, but the alternator, the 150 amp alternator went out on it. But the electric fan controller shorted out internally. Also. Yeah, it felt like you were fighting stuff. But you stayed with it. Oh yeah, I mean, what was I gonna do? That's two thousand miles from home. Uh, if anybody understands, I did three. I did three thousand miles in seven days. If anybody understands that dilemma, with me, Josie. I know the feeling when you don't have another plan, but you know, here's the thing. I left Saxe, Texas, at seven a.m. on a Saturday morning, headed to Norwalk, Ohio, by myself. I wasn't traveling with nobody. Nobody rode with me, and I wasn't traveling with other cars. So if you needed something, you, need, you had to deal with it. I had a cell phone. Yeah. Did you have to use it? It's good to you, right? No. You didn't have to use it? You had to call you? No, I made it. I always made it to my next destination. Had to work on it when I got there, but... So your fans were a big problem, right? Electric fans, yeah. They kept blowing fuses. It melted the plastic around the fuse and never blew the fuse on, one, on a couple times. Well, it's a, it was a control system that came with the radiator and the fans. And what it was, I think it was just some bad solder joints on the circuit boards. And that, that got hot and shorted out. So we hot-wired some heavy-duty uh, relays to where right now the fans come on as soon as you turn the key on. And it's been that way for a year ever since. I haven't changed you, it back. you ever used the starter solenoid for a relay? No. It works good. Like the, they have those like metal frames. Yeah. You know, it uses the full on it. Luckily, there was a guy one night on Wednesday night staying at the same hotel that was an electrical engineer for Toyota, and he had a whole rebuild toolkit with him of electrical shit, straight relays, heavy duty crap, and he said, "I got everything we need to fix it if you." want and I said well sure because what I got came from O'Reilly's and they didn't have anything worth shit yeah and so he said we well, did it right there in the hotel parking lot under the front entrance it's pretty amazing so we're gonna pull it back in yeah let's pull it back in and just see if we can find this controller real quick if we don't have the cable that might be a problem we might have to do an initial test drive we just took the black 57 bel air and had initial dyno tune done on it today over at the uh with james carter at uh, hpp hpp racing in uh, garland texas they do some of the tuning on a lot of the uh, street outlaw cars come all the way down from oklahoma to have them tune so that's one of the better places around to go so uh, pretty happy with the results of the car on the tune on the dyno. We weren't looking for horsepower numbers, just drivability numbers, and uh, so it still made 385 to the rear wheels on a 430 horse crate motor. That's not bad, and uh, so we're gonna start putting a few miles on it, doing some dyno tune uh, or after the dyno tune. We noticed uh, a few little things uh, wasn't quite shifting like we wanted it to, so we put, check the fluid, we're going to go drive it, check that. Uh, speedometers decided to not work, so we got to do that. But all in all, the car is going to be a nice car. It rides good, it's on a Roadster shop chassis, uh, pull over shocks all the way around, four link in the rear. It's got the, uh, what we decided was, the 6.2. LS, yeah, LS3, 6.2, 4L60 transmission. This car is just built to drive, cruise. It's got the vintage air in it. We'll start messing with that. We're just checking out the brakes and alignment, drivability of it. It's going to be a pretty nice car. Uh, we still got to do some uh, final assembly. Uh, these bell layers are real finicky on door glass adjustment for the uh, flappers that go on them above the doors and the rear 
rear quarter windows, all that's pretty finicky on adjustment to seal it up. But all in all, this is going to be a nice little car. The car's going to end up going home to uh, Hobbs, New Mexico. That's where it's uh, out of. So we got the tachometers working, the no speedometer, temperature gauge is working, oil pressure. So everything's working on it but the speedometer. So we got to chase some wiring down on that. And we had to do a speed density tune on this instead of a traditional uh, tune with a map sensor. Uh, and a lot of that's because of the way we built the air intake system. We split it and had uh, we have two air filters one behind each headlight these 57 Chevys the fresh air ducts which fresh air would have came into the quarter panels or kick panels I mean down in this area there's a door down here you could open or close to let cool air in as you were driving well it had a tunnel above the front tires and when we get back to the shop I'll show you above each headlight was a, a screen an air cavity and so we chose to put the filters up behind that which it actually made the engine compartment really look nice and now we're getting cool fresh air to the motor at all times so we'll take a look at that when we get back Just to keep from having traditional copycat filter on one side. And we have two K&N filters that come in. So this comes in and comes up here. We actually have a K&N air filter up and under here. And it's closed in on the back side so it's receiving fresh air. Mm -hmm. 